So let's talk about the dollar sign get super global array in PHP. One of the cool things about PHP is because it's dealing with server side programming and because there's a lot of very common tasks that you'll do when you're building the server side aspect of a website, they have a lot of pre built things that you can use. Dollar sign get, dollar sign post, these are a couple of them. These are a couple of the super global arrays. And what they do basically is Anytime you have a PHP page, so I've got a page here, get.php, it's being processed by the PHP interpreter, and every time a PHP page is read, it will search for this. This variable name refers to something that it has already created for you. When a request comes to the web server and the PHP interpreter is building this, it is going to see, hey, you know, what data have you sent me? for me to build this page. If there's anything that has been sent through the query string, that is going to exist inside of this array. The array is going to be pre-built for you. So if I were to, let's say, before I get into actually working with the form here, I just want to do a little bit of a demonstration. I'm adding a query string. So at the end of my URL, I'm putting a question mark, and then I'm going to put a variable name. Let's say uh, name equals Simon. This is a name value pair. Now I've just arbitrarily picked these. There's nothing special about either of these. The only important piece is the fact that there's an equal sign between them. So this is the name of the variable. This is the value of the variable. If I want to add a second one, I can put ampersand and then my next one. So let's say age equals 32. Now I've got one variable called name, one variable called age. The value of name is Simon, the value of age is 32. These are being passed through the query string. So I have my network tab open here in the Chrome DevTools. I'm going to hit enter up here. I'm going to load this page. My request is going through. And why is my request not showing up? Okay, well, this is, oh, that's why. <laughs> Had it set to XHR and fetch, the uh, XML HTTP request. Okay, under all, there we have it, right here. This is my request. So get name, there's the full string right below there. This is the request that's sent to the server. So the page is called get.php, and then the query string has all this other stuff. Now, if I want to see that, if I click on here, and I go to headers, request name, that's the full URL. The request method is get. Now this is important. Dollar sign get, the super global array get. When you use the request method get, all the data that you're sending is being put into this array. So you know, I created one called name, one called age. I now have an array that has two things inside of it. The first thing called name, the second thing called age. The request headers right here Here's all the other stuff that got sent to the server talking about my browser and what kind of things it's willing to accept and what kind of things it's sending to me. And uh, response, this is the stuff that the server is sending back to me, a whole bunch of stuff. You can see PHP version 7.1, that's the version of PHP that's being used to parse my PHP page. And down here at the bottom, query string parameters, name, age. This will be the contents of my get super global array. All right, so let's come back over here. In my PHP page, right now I don't have any PHP code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up at the very top. And the reason that I put it up here at the very top is I want to be able to deal with things like connecting to a database, uh, working with session variables, talking to the server, changing the headers, all this kind of stuff. I need to do that before I actually start to send any content back to the server, or back to the browser, rather. So by putting it up here at the very top, before there's any spaces, even if I put a blank line here or a single space, that's going to mess this up because the server is going to see that as actual content that's meant to be sent to the browser, and then it's not going to let me change any headers or set any session data. I don't want to do that. So I want to make sure that this is the very beginning this happens before my doc type. All right, inside of here, I've got this query string that's being sent to me. 
Simon and Mage. So if I want to check and see if that actually exists, I'm going to do a PHP if statement. So if, and then inside of here, I'm going to use the built-in function is set. This allows me to check whether or not a variable has been created. And I can put any variable name in here I want. The one I'm looking for is name. This one. I want to know if this one exists. If it does, then I'm going to echo hello, and then I'm going to get get name. So that's the value inside of there. Now I'm going to have to put this inside of curly braces to make this work properly. But I'm going to write that out. I'm going to refresh this. And there it is. Hello, Simon. If I take this off, and I load my page, message isn't there. If I put this back on the end, send it through, there it is. So my page, it's the exact same page, get.php, but the page is rendering two different ways depending on whether or not that variable exists. Now I can check to see if it's equal to some other value or do other things with it, but the important thing here is, does this variable exist? Well, it only exists if I sent data through the query string, if I set the method for the page as get. And that's what I'm doing here in my HTML. You'll see my form method equals get. That's how I'm controlling this information. When I send this information off to the server, I want to be able to say that this is going to be sent through the query string using the get method so that my server side code can look for full name. Let's do that. And then email is my other one. Now you'll also note I've got an ID and a name. The ID is what gets used for JavaScript and for CSS. Name is what gets used by the server-side programming. So name is what actually gets sent off to the server. The ID gets used client-side, name gets used server-side. All right, now let's uh, write another line in here. So if is set full name, Inside of the get super global array, I'm going to write hello with the name, and then I'm going to write um, your email is, and it's going to be inside of here, call email. There we go. All right, so this will run if this form is submitted. So name and email are things in my form. I'm checking to see if I've got full name. If I've got full name, then I know from this page I'm going to get email. If this were a real-world application, I would specifically check for both. Uh, because somebody else could send a request to get. Like, I'm not submitting the form here, but I could come in here and go like this. Full name equals Rex. Hit enter. Hey, I've got an error now on my page because I wasn't checking. I'm using email from the get super global array, but I didn't check to see if it existed. Anybody can type this in. Anybody can type anything they want in the query string. I can't stop them from doing that. So it's always a good idea to always check for everything. So let's add that in here. And is set dollar sign get email. There we are. I'm just putting the spaces in here to make this a little bit easier to read. The space here is not required. So if full name exists inside the super global get array, and if email exists inside the super global get array, then these two lines of code will be processed, and I will write out the message. So let's test it out with our page here. Let's say name is Steve and email is steve at work.org. Send. There we go. Hello, Steve. Your email is steve at work.org. So that works. And if we come in here to check this out, there was the full URL. The method was get. Absolutely. And down at the bottom, query string parameters. There they are. So that is the super global get array. It's just bundling up data, putting it in the query string, and sending it off to the server so that PHP or whatever language you're using can use the data from the query string to generate new content for the page. Now I put it up at the top. 
I could have put it down here as well. I put it up here as a best practice, but I could have put this into variables and then written out the variables down here. All right, hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.